जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रीवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु we saw in the last class he wants to spend his night at nabat but master wants him to be in panchavati panchavati that hut behind the panchavati is where shri ramkrishna practiced advaitik sadhana under the guidance of his guru totapuri maharaj so there the spiritual vibrations shri ram krishna wants him to utilize the the nectar means it's a free giving star ko shri ram krishna has done lot of tapas there in that land and the whole thing is filled which is going to suppress all human and animal nature in man and awaken the divine within so he wants that divine atmosphere like a person is sitting in some place where there is beautiful light hmm like sitting in moonlight and looking at moon like that he wants that coolness of spiritual awareness spiritual di- divine atmosphere to uh, suppress all the world feelings worldly feelings within worldly thoughts worldly touch worldly vasanas he wants to get rid of and remaining in the spiritual atmosphere in the divine presence of god and he wants him to do the sadhana hmm master oh they will let you have it but i suggested panchavati because so much of contemplation and meditation have been practiced there and the name of god has been chanted there for so often means many people come sing and go use and use that whoever is a sadhaka he loves such places he immediately recognizes oh here is a silent place here is a spiritual vibrations where i can sit calmly and do my spiritual practices it was evening incense was burning in master's room he was sitting on the small couch absorbed in meditation yem was sitting on the floor with rakhal latu and ramlal master said to yem this sum and substance of the whole thing is to cultivate devotion for god and love him at shri ram krishna's request ram lal sang a few songs master said to him the sum and substance of the whole thing is to cultivate devotion for god and love him this is the whole thing that is uh, the whole, what spiritual life is what spiritual practices are and how to transcend this nature we are imprisoned in this nature how to go beyond all these limitations forever time in space cause and effect law of cause and effect which is working as constantly as karma which is making me move in a merry go round again and again same birth death old age sufferings joys enjoyments all this how long to go how to transcend this and go beyond the simplest thing is to cultivate devotion of god and love him 
devotion is where uh, we devotion bhakti devotion is where i keep the duality between god and me i am your servant i serve you i am your friend i love you all these various relationship i enter into god and then i expresses i want to be in his company to serve him in various ways with various relationship as father as mother as child as friend or uh, a servant all these are various relationship in and through which i am going to serve the lord this is bhakti devotion i am devoted to god in that i feel concern i feel the where i have to dedicate in some way mm. but in love to love him love is where all other aspects of my existence become silent and merge in my heart senses merge in heart uh, it senses want just to recognize him yes he is my lord intellect want want to identify nothing more never the question comes doubt comes anything comes he is there and he is there identification hmm. senses perceive intellect is able to understand mind is able to conceive so heart heart all this merge in heart through our heart they are confirming all this a lover when he sees a, the object of his love how he feels his mind intellect senses are perceiving but whole, all these instruments are filled with love eyes are seeing object of love and through eyes love is flowing he wants to touch through karmendriya his love is expressing through eyes love is expressing through intellect mind is asking you want anything uh, mind is asking you want anything La through mind is expressing flowing love is flowing similarly we may hate someone through my words through my mind through my senses everything i am expressing that hatred here everything is but well, love is flowing in and through all the instruments instruments as if they are conductors now the senses are receiving but giving out love you see senses is always input karmendriyas organs of action are output always they i work i take all this external i am pouring out i see i see is coming in but through same eyes that are seeing love is flowing the same words the sweet words of the person whom i love or the object which i love is entering and same way the love is flowing through my ears so all senses mind intellect love is flowing out and they are all within the area of my heart they are not sitting in their places now they are rooted in my heart from heart the through all the instruments i am using senses and mind and intellect it is love that is flowing out that is love of god so in love of god i pour out my love and what do i expect not to serve in devotion i want to serve in and through my relationship there i keep the relationship as the pradhana 
how I look upon God as myself as servant, as myself as friend, myself as mother of the God or child of God. I want to reciprocate. I want to serve in the same way. I want. I am a small baby. I am a small child on the lap of mother, and I want to make mother happy like I. How a mother would be happy with its child. I want to take that part of the child and make mother happy. So there, uh, my attitudes, everything is relationship based. Here it is love based. In love, I want to merge and become one with the object of love. Here on the other side, there in the uh, in um, devotion, I am taking up a part to play. Mm. I am going to express my feelings, love, everything through that aspect. So. This is the difference between loving God and being Sri Ramakrishna's cultivation of devotion for God. That I am taking up both. Sometimes because the continuously we cannot remain in one mood and one you know, every moment mind and all our things are changing. So whole my being is changing every moment. So my moods of mind, mood is combination of mind and heart. Hmm. So moods are changed every moment and I see these things are happening. As my changes are there, I have to take either devotional part because I cannot part from God. That is where I am anchored. That is where I am rooted. It will be uh, it will do derooting a plant if I go away from God. It is getting nourishment from God, my love of God, my spiritual life. Spiritual life is always being rooted in God. Dwell in God and live in world. Dwell in God and live in world. So I am rooted in God. Or I am working in the world. I am anchored in God and working. When I am contemplating, when I am myself, when I am sleeping, when I am studying, I am rooted in God. And when I am working, I am anchored in God. So this, uh, uh, I am out of. If I don't have one of the two, devotion or love, I can alternate it. I can go from one according to the moods and my moods and feelings. I may orient to, towards now towards bhakti. I go and do, do something. I pluck flowers and place. Hmm. I prepare some food and offer. And as love, I contemplate, I feel oneness with God. So either these two, I must be there with God at all times. Unbroken thought of God. Unbroken contact with God. Unbroken communion with God. Communion through work. Indian through work I am communing with God. It is called Karma Yoga. Indian through Bhakti, devotion, I am associated with God. In communion with God. Communion is a feeling in, in every aspect I am in having interaction with God. I am talking to God, I am telling to God, I am listening to God, I am praying to God, I am feeding God. All these are interactions. This interaction is communion. In communion, the world and all other aspects of existence are barred off, are taken away. So here only that I am loving God or I am having devotion to God is where I am holding on to unbroken thought, unbroken communion. Uh, either somehow uh, I should not break morning get up, getting up with the thought of God I get up. 
I move about doing all works, being anchored in God. I am going to brush my teeth in the morning. I am communing with God. I am offering this act. You have given me this body. You have given me intellect. You have given me mind. You have given me senses. This body belongs to you. I am just doing this brushing of my teeth by the objects given to me and the objects that belong to you. Whole bodily existence belongs to you. It is yours. So I am communing with God. Spiritualizing every activity, spiritualizing every senses and my position, every faculty that is in me. So I am dissolving my ego. I am dissolving my bodily identity and there the real communion continues. In every aspect I can bring somehow or the other divine and then it say, amounts to my slowly entering into the transcendental realm. So there we see hmm, that we are entering into the new field. Hmm. Sri Ramakrishna says either devotion or loving him. Sri Ramakrishna requested. Sri Ramakrishna at the at Sri Ramakrishna's request, Ramlal sang a few songs. The master himself singing the first line each of each. Hmm. So, in uh, I always. Tell any sadhaka, cultivate unbroken thought of God. Let the, like underwater current, let the thought of divine be going behind all your activities and thought. When sleeping, sleep with divine awareness so that my center of consciousness shifts to the heart. The center of consciousness when the child is born is at Nabhi, the Manipura level of consciousness. And as it plays, eats, makes fun, it starts climbing down to the Swadhisthana. It gets fixed there. Being there at the enjoy seat of enjoyment, I am sleeping, I am waking up, I am going to school. All these things I am doing is my center of consciousness is Circles are going round. Center is there. Center is at the all things like clock. It is going. All the hands are, both hands are moving in the clock. But it's how its center is fixed and it is moving. Like that, our consciousness is fixed at a particular either enjoyment or food. Hmm. Nabi is food and clinging to life. Then when it comes to heart, it is consciousness is fixed at the divine awareness, the shift of consciousness to a higher level. He sleeps with divine awareness, wakes up with divine awareness, works with divine awareness, eats, enjoys, going for play, is singing music, is listening to music. Everything with divine awareness. He meditates with divine awareness and he contemplates with divine. He works, in, he designs so many things in his life like building, designing, software designing. All this he does with his awareness fixed in the heart. So the shift of, shift of level of consciousness to higher levels where as it goes, the whole paradigm shifts. There is a shift in the paradigm. I see a new world. I see myself a new person. So I am no more the person who is whose consciousness is centered around enjoyment and doing attending to all things day and night. It is at the divine awareness he is passing through all this. This is called shift of divine awareness. Sri Ramakrishna wants 
that shift of awareness to be done. So he wanted him to stay there in the Panchavati and he is telling him, see the whole thing is the substance and content of all this. What I am going to tell the spiritual life is cultivation of love and devotion to God. So now Sri Ramakrishna is request he is singing song. Now the singing song is like uh, mm, fixing the now something has been put inside uh, and you have to even in computers whatever you do it must be saved control s you have to save it save it save it. otherwise the moment you put out it goes off this singing song is a resting place where the fixation takes place the whole thing is heard now a song makes this get firmly fixed with it because heart should immediately not jump out by practice if default it runs again to the world somebody comes his attention is gone there who has come the moment he perceives another person coming inside the whole thing uh, his personality who is coming all this come into mind here the heart is missing that so when it has to continue for some time to get absorption to get the thing fixed within i hear i learn it must be my own it this is called medha medha is power of cognition now when we talk to uh, enlightened soul the power of cognition to a great extent is invoked by the enlightened soul to make you understand his presence itself makes you understand what is he telling you but it should not go away so it is your understanding power of understanding must be followed by power of retention it must be retained so sri ramakrishna is asking a song to be sung so that it is retained in our childhood days my father used to last in those days in the early 1950s 60s hmm. we used to night we used to listen with no tv no radio no uh, cell phone so whole thing is what parents say or grandparents tell so we used to sit and wait now when taking food you go on telling the saints life Uh, from mahabharata ramayana after that we wash our hands and nobody will speak at home just we do. together we walk in the angan in the friend place for 15 minutes before we go to sleep that is a time of fixation and in sleep it again projects forth so here the song takes that part of fixation it is making the thing fix inside so this uh, sri ram krishna wants the comprehension to understand is what has been retention and application this is called medha awakening of medha so this medha awakens anything you understand immediately you will understand in the spiritual perspective we understand everything in the worldly perspective their labha hani is my, my own concern the moment any person goes on talking anything regarding the world its labha hani then he is in the worldly perspective uh, evolution in uh, spiritual perspective when we think and see it is in the spiritual perspective evolution in spiritual per, uh, uh, perspective it is evolution of the jiva in worldly perspective it is labha hani uh, 
gains and losses. What did I gain? What did I lose? So there I am coming to the money matters, material gains and losses, not spiritual gains and losses. Here it is evolution. How do how am I ever evolving in my spiritual life? So here Sri Ramakrishna is asking uh, one Ramlal to sing. Ramlal sang. Oh, what a vision I have beheld. Kesha Bharati's hut. Gora, in all his matchless grace, shedding tears in a thousand streams. Like mad elephant, he dances in ecstasy and sings, drunk with an overwhelming love. Hmm. The previous sentence is, you must love God and cultivate devotion for Him. The whole thing is expressed in these two. This is whole of spiritual life to love God and cultivate devotion. After that, he is giving an example how that ecstatic love of God would be there where he has forgotten the world, forgotten the body and in the awareness of divine, he is shedding the joy, the tears of joy, tears of ananda, ananda bhashpa is flowing from his eyes. Hmm. What a vision I have beheld in Kesho Bharati's heart, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. Gora, in all his matchless gay, grace, matchless grace. Hmm. When, when some people walk and move, talk and deal with things, we see them doing with gracefully. They are full of graceless, uh, graceless behavior, graceful behavior. What a difference it creates, you see. Uh, everything is graceful, graceful. Graceful is where the onlooker gets great joy hmm, to the extent he becomes aware of something which he doesn't know hmm, and which is making him forget all the pains and um, uh, worries of the world. In when I see something, if it makes me forget the worries of world and pains and all problems of life uh, and gives a unknown joy, then we call it his grace. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said everything was graceful. His dance was graceful. His dance, his tears that roared and singing, his both hand lifted up. Mm, was graceful. That grace Shira, Shira, the song is expressing. Om Niranjanam Nityamananta Rupam Bhaktanukam Padrita Vikraham Vai Ishavataram Paramesham Yadyam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasana Mamaha.